Good morning everybody. Today we will discuss about another invertebrate group that is Echinodermata. Now the word Echinodermata came from a three Greek words. The first one is Echinos which is Dharma that means skin and the third one that is Atta a T A, which means to bear. So, Echinodermata means those organisms which have a spiny skin. Now, after the arthropods and mollusks, we know that arthropods are the um, most diversified organisms found in the world and mollusks are the second most diversified group so after these two the echinoderms are the third most commonly skeletonized phylum found in the marine condition at present near about 3500 genera and 13000 species are known from the fossil record so these figures red and 13000 genera and species these are the only fossil records of echinoderms with this if we include the present day genus and present day species it becomes a huge number and that is why it is or the group become the third most abundant the third most diversified hard part bearing phylum found in marine condition now although there are many different kinds of echinoderms the most common type or most commonly uh, seen echinoderms which is often found in our biology classes or in the zoological laboratories that is a starfish uh, what we readily look that starfish have a five arms so most of the echinoderms have these kinds of five ray like uh, symmetry that is pentameral symmetry but there are some groups in which above this fivefold or uh, pentameral symmetry a secondary bilateral symmetry was superimposed so generally echinoderms have a fivefold or pentameral symmetry but in some groups there is a bilateral symmetry superimposed on the pentameral symmetry so initially they have the pentameral symmetry but a secondary bilateral symmetry is superimposed on the pentameral symmetry for that the pentameral symmetry is slightly modified the second distinctive features of echinoderms are the endoskeletons so all the echinoderms they have an internal mesodermal shell or internal mesodermal hard part and these hard parts are basically uh, small hexagonal uh, pore bearing that means a hole bearing calcite plates uh, which are spiny that means it bears spines and these plates cover both outside and inside by a thin protoplasmic skin so that is why it is known as endoskeleton so like the human body the bones and muscles are covered by a thin skin the echinoderm taste or the echinoderm hard parts they are also covered by a very thin protoplasmic skin and which makes them a endoskeleton group the third property 
is the presence of water vascular system this unique mechanism of echinoderms basically controls the most of the echinoderm activity now sea water is transported within the animal through a system of radial canals the tube feeds are the main organs by which the water movement within the uh, echinoderm body was done and these tube feeds are also used for locomotion and food collection respiration so this tube feeds is a multifunctionary organ which is mainly used for water vascular system that is movement of water within the echinoderm body but apart from this the tube feed is also used for other function like food collection respiration locomotion and it also act as a sensory organ so these are the three distinctive features which all the echinoderm organisms they have and by these three distinctive features we can easily distinct or we can easily separate out the echinoderms group from the others now all the echinoderms they are strictly marine there is no freshwater or terrestrial counterparts so all the echinoderms organisms they are restricted to the marine saline water that means they are stenohaline although some species are found in some brackish water also but that is also a situation near to oceans the echinoderms may be sessile that means occurs uh, above the substrate and fixed in a place or they may be vagile that means move across the uh, or over the substrate even some echinoderms groups are infernal also but whatever may be whether uh, echinoderms are infernal or epiphonal all the echinoderm group of organisms they are in contact with the bottom substrate that means they are all benthic if we look at the bathymetry of echinoderm group of organisms most of the echinoderms occurs in intertidal to abyssal depth that means from shallow marine to deep marine also so they have a huge range of uh, habitat in the ocean uh, body or in the ocean realm where they can sustain a uh, huge bathymetric depth huge uh, pressure of the overlying water color and that is why they are they occur or they are found from intertidal region to the deeper part that is the abyssal zone now if we look at the classification of echinodermata group or echinodermata phylum according to most uh, usable or ready to use classification proposed in 1791 the phylum echinodermata is divided into three sub phylums crinozoa asterozoa and echinozoa and these three sub phylums are again divided into five classes crinoidea Ophiuroidea, Asteroidea, Echinoidea, and Holothuroidea. And these are the nicknames of these classes. Crinoidea is known as Crinoid, 
Ophiuroidea is known as brittle stars, Astroidea as sea stars, Echinoidea as sea archaeans, and Holothuroidea as sea cucumbers. So these are the common names or nicknames of these five classes. Now, in our undergraduate syllabus, among these five classes, we have to go to study in detail the class Echinoidea. So up to this, we have learned the common things, the common characters, the common features, which is common in all the Echinodermata phylum. Now on, we are going to study in detail the morphology and the other things of the class Echinoidea. If we look at the morphology of the class Echinoidea, it shows a great variety. There are different types of morphological features found in all fossil and living uh, Echinoidea class of organisms. But although there are different varieties, although there are great diversity, but there are some unique features which is common in most of the Echinoidea class of organisms. Now most Echinoids, they have a hard part or skeletonized part which is known as taste. And this taste, this hard skeletonized part is made up of individual hexagonal plates which are known as ossicles. These individual plates is known as ossicle and plural number is ossicles. And these plates are made up of high magnesium calcite. So because the plates are made up of calcite and we know that in present day natural condition, calcite is the most stable form rather than aragonite. So after the death of the organism, after the death of the echinoids, the shell or the hard part of the echinoids that remain unchanged. There is no diagenetic alteration occurs within the uh, echinoid taste. So as calcite is stable, so calcite remain as calcite. So that is why the echinoid shells or the echinoid taste, they are highly used for any kind of or for different kinds of isotopic study. Because whenever, suppose a cell is made up of aragonite, but in natural condition after the death, as aragonite is not stable, so it is converted after the death of the organism to calcite. So because of this uh, change, these are not usable, these are not good for isotopic study because some sort of uh, isotopic differentiation, isotopic change occurs and due to these diagetic changes, uh, it does not provide us the actual isotopic scenario from which the paleo environment or other kinds of things can be uh, deducted or can be found. But in case of echinoid taste, as these are made up of calcite, so they are very less, less prone for any kind of diagenetic changes. That means they remain almost as it is. So that is why they are used for any kind of paleo environment or paleoclimatic study with the help of isotopes uh, present in the shell material of the echinoids. Now, if we look at the echinoid test from the top, the periphery, that is the maximum diameter, the maximum uh, outline shape we get when we look at the echinoid test from the uh, top, the maximum outline shape what we get it's called its ambitus. Now 
unlike the external skeletons of arthropods the echinoderm skeletons or the echinoderm hard parts they are enclosed in a soft protoplasmic skin so the echinoid cells the echinoid hard parts that means the individual uh, ossicles they are continuously remodeled and growth occurs by accretion and addition of new part and new material rather than the molting type of growth what we found in case of arthropods so in case of arthropods we found that their skeletonized part is not suitable for their growing soft part so often with time with their growth they have to discard their hard part completely and they have to create new hard parts that process is known as molting but instead the molting type of growth what we found in arthropods echinoid hard parts grow by accretion as well as addition of new shell material now the side of the taste that is the hard part bearing the mouth that is the ventral side or oral side apart from ventral side the most used term to indicate the uh, side of the mouth is known as the oral side uh, here you can see the echinoid shell from a side view and actually there is a pro mistake this side is the aboral side this top side is the aboral side and the bottom side that is the oral side so in this bottom side echinoids actually have their mouth in the bottom portion that is the side which is in contact with the substrate and in this portion the echinoid uh, mouth remains so this side is known as the oral side or the ventral side whereas the opposite side that is the dorsal side this side bears the anus that means the excretory organ from which the excreta goes out from the shell so this side is known as the dorsal side or aboral side again although dorsal side is scientifically correct but the most used terminology to indicate the side which bears anus that is the aboral side so the bottom side which bears the uh, oral that means the mouth is the oral side whereas the opposite side which bears the uh, anus that is the aboral side now there is a hollow found surrounding the mouth that means a circular to semicircular uh, opening found surrounding the mouth which is covered by imbricately arranged soft place is known as peristome so basically the uh, opening or the area surrounding the mouth in echinoids found in the oral side is known as the peristome like the peristome a similar circular to semicircular area also found surrounding the anus in the aboral side and anus is also covered by some soft plates and this area surrounding the anus in echinoids is known as periproct peristome that is the circular or semicircular area surrounding peristome uh, surrounding sorry surrounding mouth is known as peristome and the area that is the circular to semicircular in shape surrounding anus in the aboral side is known as periproct so always peristome we found in this lower part that is in the oral side 
and periproc found in this upper part that is the dorsal side or aboral side. Now on the aboral side or often it is known as the um, ad apical side or apical side that is the opposite side of the oral surface oral side there is a central apical disc this disc contains a double ring of plates two types of plates which is composed of five genital plates those are larger in size and five ocular plates and these plates arranged in an alternate fashion so one genital plate then one ocular plate then again one genital plate then again one ocular plate in this type of alternate fashion these genital plates which are larger in size and the ocular plates which are smaller in size they are found surrounding a flexible plated membrane that contains the anus so here you can see this black portion in the center is the anus this small black this is the anus and surrounding the anus there are numerous small flexible plates this one and surrounding these plates these are the genital plates this large size this shaded shaded plates and this black one also uh, these shaded plates you can uh, see there are five number of genital plates and alternately there are ocular plates also marked as o here you can see these are one ocular plate there is one there is one another one and this one so five genital plates and five ocular plates occur surrounding the flexible plated membrane that contains the anus and this ring of two types of plates this ring of genital plates and ocular plates is known as apical disc now all the plates all the genital plates and all the ocular plates they bear a hole a pore the hole or the pore which is present in the genital plates they are used as the outlets of the gonads the gonad is a reproductory organ whereas the pores found in the ocular plate they are the part of the water vascular system that is from these pores the tube feet we came to know previously that tube feet used as a water vascular uh, system uh, organ that is the organ within the water vascular system and it has also other functions to do but in the ocular plates the holes are used for the emergence of tube feeds so, so again i am recalling the previous things the aboral side there was an anus there is the opening from which all the excreta goes out from the shell the anus is surrounded by numerous small flexible plates together these uh, plates and the anus this entire hole is known as periproct this entire portion the anus surrounding uh, circular to semicircular area because after the death of the organism these things are gone these things are generally not preserved so here we get a uh, circular to semicircular opening in the fossil specimens and this opening is known as periproc surrounding these anas and this soft flexible plated portion is a double ring of plates that means a five genital plate and uh, alternate with uh, five ocular plates genital plates are larger in size ocular plates are smaller in size each genital plate and each ocular plate bears a pore the genital pores are the sites from which the gonads came out from the shell whereas the ocular pores are the sites from which the tube feeds 
came out from the shell. Now, there are five narrow segments which are found in connection with the ocular plates. You can see uh, from each ocular plate, a five narrow segments as there are five ocular plates. So in connection with the ocular plates, in the ocular taste, we found a five narrow segments or five columns of plates, which are known as ambulacra or in short, they are nicknamed now as these are five in number. So it is plural in plural number. It is called amps. So there are five ambulacra. Similarly, with genital plates in connection to the genital plates, there are also five bands of plates and these are known as interambulacra or interamp. Now again, as these are five in number, so these are known as interamps. Now each amp and each interamp consist of two columns of hexagonal plates. We came to know previously that each of the echinoid shell test material that is the ossicles are of hexagonal in shape. So all the plates of amp and interamp they are also hexagonal in shape and each amp or each interamp they are consist of two columns of hexagonal plates you can see in this uh, portion in this portion that is a interamp because it is connected with this genital plate and it consists two columns of uh, hexagonal plates similarly this portion is a amp this is a amp this one is a interamp and you can see this amp is also connected with a uh, ocular plate and in this amp we can also see two columns of hexagonal plates so in this way a echinoid taste or echinoid shell is basically composed of five columns of radially arranged amps alternate with five columns of radially arranged interamps now in the echinoid taste we can easily the amp is basically narrower portion of the taste so it basically um, very narrow portion or thin whereas interamp covers more wider area that is a wider region found in the uh, echinoid taste so with the with this um, wideness of the bands we can easily distinguish the amp and interamp within a echinoid taste now here you can uh, see the one picture of the oral side taste you can see that these are the larger plates in the apical disc so this is the uh, this is the genital plates alternate with this smaller one that is the ocular plates so this portion is the amp and this portion is the interamp that is the wider portion of the echinoid taste which bears the uh, hexagonal plates of two columns originating or coming out or in contact with the genital plate so you can see all the amps are interamps are arranged in an alternate fashion amps are relatively narrow whereas interamps are generally wider now this view is from the top side of the aboral side so in the aboral side you can see that the maximum peripheral part this outline of the taste this is known as ambitus similarly that peripheral outline or the maximum peripheral outline you can also get from the 
observing it from the oral side also so in oral side you will, you will see the mouth and the mouth surrounding region that is the peristome and this peristome are surrounded by some buccal plates and some gill notches so this entire portion which is present in the oral side the mouth surrounding region that you can see from the oral view and in this view also you can see the maximum peripheral part which is known as ambitus now the plates the hexagonal plates in the m region or in the ambulacra they bear pore space through which the tube feed emerges so all the ambulacral plates they have a pore space from which the organ including in the water vascular system that is the tube feed they emerge from each and individual plates within the am but in interams the plates within the interams they does not have any kind of perforations any kinds of pores now the interambulacral plates they are larger in size circles that is one kind of uh, ornamentation and they does not have any kinds of perforations but in comparison the ambulacral plates each ambulacral plates they bear a pair of pores that means always the pores the perforations occur in couple occur in pair and these pair of pores occur in the outer edge of the plate these pore pairs are the sides from which tube feet emerge through the taste you can see the pair of pores so these are the basically uh, two columns of ambulacral plates and in their outer margin near the outer margin near the outer edge these pore space occur in pairs so in always in all echinoids whenever you found these kinds of uh, pore spaces or perforations in the ambulacral plates always these perforations occur in pairs the pairs may be one the pairs may be two pairs may be three or more in number so that may be two four six eight ten in this numbers the perforations in the ocular plates are found to occur now each pair of perforations in the ambulacral plate is found to be situated within a slightly depressed zone and this depressed zone is known as peripodium so every pair of pore is found to occur within a slightly elliptical to circular depressed zone this kinds of depressed zone within which the pair of pores occurs and this depressed zone which is surrounded by an elevated rim obviously this individual depressed zone is known as peripodium so basically peripodium is the place where the pair of pores occurs now if we look at the echinoid shell we can see that there is a junction line between the two amps that means two hexagonal plates within a amp and also a junction line between the hexagonal plates of amp and interamp and also a junction line a zigzag shaped junction line between the two columns of hexagonal plates within a interamp so each junction line between the hexagonal plates of amp and interamps have a different name now the junction line between the two amps is known as par radiation line found in the ambulacral region between the two columns of hexagonal plates in the 
ambulacral uh, portion is known as the par radial suture or often it is also known as a radial suture the second zigzag shaped junction line is in between the two columns of hexagonal plates found in the interamp portion and that suture is known as interradial suture and the third type where a zigzag shaped uh, line found between the plates of amp and the interamp and this is known as add radial suture so the zigzag shaped line between the ambulacral plates radial suture or par radial suture zigzag shaped uh, junction line between the two interamp is known as interradial suture and the line joining the amp and interamps is the add radial suture now the echinoid taste as i previously told you that mostly they are have a pentameral symmetry that is a five fold symmetry that means all the amps and interamps they are of equal size and shape as you can see in this picture the shape and size of this amp is exactly similar with this one and exactly similar with this one and you can see these are the narrower segments within the echinoid test similarly the interamps also they are also similar in size and shape so that is why we call the echinoid shells they have a five fold symmetry or pentaminal symmetry and these kinds of echinoids they are generally have a circular outline that means circular ambitus and these echinoids are known as regularia however there are some echinoids found in nature on which a secondary bilateral symmetry is superimposed on the primary five fold symmetry as you can see in this picture so here also five five amps and interamps are found as you can see in this portion this is the portion of one amp this is another amp this one is another amp this one is another and this one is another so i identify these portions as amps on the basis of these pore pairs found these are the pore pairs and we know that the pore spaces are only present in the ambulacral plates so you can see that these are the amps and these amps are not equal in size and shape and alternate with the five interamps and these five interamps are also not equal in size and shape so although these are five in numbers but they are not strictly showing a pentameral symmetry instead we can divide the entire echinoid test into same two halves or similar looking two halves that means a mirror plane or a bilateral symmetry so this amp is almost equal in size and shape with this amp this amp is almost equal in size and shape with this amp this amp is divided into two segments uh, this interamp is equal in size and shape with this interamp this one is equal size and shape in this interamp and this interamp is divided into two segments so you can see the entire echinoid test although it has initially a five fold symmetry which is found from the presence of five amps and five interamps but later due to superimposition of the bilateral symmetry now we have a mirror plane or we have a symmetry plane above which the two sides of uh, echinoid test are looks similar so now the amps are occurs 
in pairs with respect to their size and shape so you can see this is one pair of amps this is another pair of amps which are equal in size of size and shape and there is a single amp which does not have any pair similarly this interamp is in pair with this one this interamp is in pair with this one and this interamp is occurs as single one so it does not has any kinds of pairs so one amp and in the opposite direction another interamp occurs in single other amps and interamps occurs in pairs these kinds of echinoid test in which we can clearly observe a bilateral symmetry is known as irregularia now the question irregularia echinoids emerge that means why the uh, pentameral symmetry is found to be superimposed by a bilateral symmetry these kinds of change in symmetry or change in cell shape indicates the change in habitat condition all the regularia echinoids they live as epibenthic that means they live above the substrate but the irregularia they are the infernal benthic organisms that means they goes inside the sediments that means they burrow and goes within the sediment cover so for that the irregularia cells become somewhat compressed and not only that they become slightly elongated anteroposteriorly so that is why on the pentameral symmetry of regularia echinoids whenever the echinoid goes infernal a bilateral symmetry superimposed so on the basis of their shell shape the presence of symmetry we can distinguish the irregularia and regularia echinoid shells and also we can get an idea about the infernalization of the echinoid species or of the echinoid uh, test now the question comes how do i we identify the anterior and posterior direction of echinoids in case of regularia echinoids if the apical disc is present then the among all the genital plates we know that in the apical disc there are five alternate genital plate and five alternate um, ocular plate now in case of regularia the peristome and periproct they occur centrally in the oral side and aboral side so peristome occur centrally in the oral side and periproct occur centrally in the aboral side in case of regular echinoids in the periproct part that is in the aboral side in the apical disc among all the genital plates the first anterior right lateral genital plate is somewhat larger in size than the other genital plates so here in this picture you can see among all these genital plates which are larger in size compared to the ocular plates this plate is relatively larger in size compared to other genital plates so this is the first anterior right lateral genital plate and because it is somewhat different in size and shape compared to other genital plates so a special name is given to this genital plate that is madreporite madreporite so madreporite indicates the first anterior right lateral 
genital plate and on the basis of the presence of this uh, madreporite in case of regularia echinoids we can identify the anterior posterior direction so definitely this one is my anterior direction this is the anterior direction because if this will be the anterior direction then only this large size genital plate that is the madreporite occurs in the first anterior right lateral portion so obviously the opposite direction is the posterior direction so always in regularia echinoids by observing the presence of madreporite we can identify the anterior posterior direction whereas in case of irregularia echinoids where there is the ambitus is not circular instead the ambitus is somewhat elliptical uh, that means antero posteriorly somewhat elongated and often it is uh, the ambitus looks elliptical to heart shaped uh, and we found that a bilateral symmetry is superimposing on the pentameral symmetry so in these irregularia echinoids we found that the center that means the occurrence of peristome and periproc that means the occurrence of mouth and anus they are shifted along the symmetry line what is found the position in regular echinoids of mouth and anus that is in regular echinoids they occur centrally in oral side and aboral side but in case of irregular echinoids the mouth shifted along the oral side along the symmetry line in the anterior direction but it completely restricted within the oral side whereas the anus that is shifted along the symmetry line towards the posterior direction so there is a shifting of mouth position and anus position along the symmetry line towards anteriorly and towards posteriorly respectively mouth shifted anteriorly and anus shifted posteriorly now one in interesting thing is that the shifting of mouth in the anterior direction is always restricted within the oral side but the shifting of anus towards the posterior direction is not restricted in the aboral side anus may occurs or anus may move in the posterior direction and occurs in the aboral side or in the margin that is in the ambitus or even it moves and came in the oral side also so whenever we get an irregular echinoid the anus may occur in the aboral side may occur in the oral side or it occurs in the margin that is it occurs in the ambitus and depending on that it has different names when the anus or periproct occur on the posterior aboral side it known as supramarginal when periproct occurs in the posterior margin that is in the ambitus it is known as marginal and when periproct or anus occurs on the posterior oral side it is known as inframarginal but again keep in mind mouth does not go on the aboral side mouth always restricted within the oral side because all the uh, echinoids they are deposit feeders so they collect their food from the sediment body so that is why they have to restrict their mouth in the portion of the shell which is in contact with the bottom sediment that is in the oral side so 
by identifying the madreporite that is the first anterior regularia echinoid we can identify the anterior and posterior direction but the problem lies here that in most cases after the death of the uh, echinoid the periproct and this apical disc is destroyed these hexagonal plates are not found to be present in regularia echinoids and in that case if the apical disc is not preserved in that case it is impossible or almost impossible to say anterior and posterior direction in a regularia echinoid in contrast in irregularia echinoids the anterior and posterior direction identification is relatively easy as we already came to know that in every irregularia echinoid the shifting of anus always occurs mouth may shift or may not shift but anus always shifted towards posterior side so by observing the shifting of anus and if the shifting of mouth happens it happens anteriorly so with the shifting of mouth and anus the observation of these features we can identify the anterior and posterior direction not only that if we look at the unpaired amb and interamb in irregularia echinoid because we already came to know that in irregularia there are two pairs of amb and two pairs of interamb one amb and one interamb occurs unpaired so if we look at these unpaired amb and interamb the unpaired amb occurs in the anterior direction whereas the unpaired interamb occurs in the posterior side so by observing this unpaired amb and interamb we can also say the anterior and posterior direction of an irregularia echinoid now in regularia echinoids the five amps are of same size and shape that is why we call it a five fold symmetry or pentameral symmetry or often we call it as radial symmetry whereas in irregularia five amps are in bilateral symmetry arranged there are two pairs of uh, amps and interamps and as i to told already that one unpaired amp and one in unpaired interamp the unpaired amp indicates the anterior side the unpaired interamp indicates the posterior side now in case of regular echinoids if the apical disc is preserved that is all the genital plates and uh, ocular plates are preserved then we can identify the anterior and posterior direction with the help of the larger size genital plate among all other genital plates that is the madreporite and we came to know that this large size genital plate that is the madreporite occurs in the first anterior right lateral direction so here you can see this one is the madreporite that is the larger size so this will be the anterior direction now if we try to number the genital plates and the ocular plates the first anterior right lateral genital plates or the madreporite is numbered as number 2 numeric number 2 and the numbering continues in an anti clockwise direction so after 2 we move in the anti clockwise direction and the next genital plate is numbered as 3 then 4 then 5 and if we move at the clockwise direction before 2 the genital plate is numbered as 1 so this first gen numbered genital plate one number genital plate does not indicate the anterior direction rather the left side 
of the second genital plate that is the madreporite is the anterior direction similarly the ocular plates are also numbered in this way and in this case the right hand side ocular plate of the madreporite is numbered as roman 2 and then again it continues in the anti clockwise direction uh, this one is uh, roman 3 then roman 4 ocular plate roman 5 and this one is the roman 1 so keep in mind the first anterior right lateral genital plate is numbered as 2 that is the madreporite and the numbering increases in the anti clockwise direction likewise the ocular plates are also numbered but in this case for ocular plates they are numbered in roman numbers and they are also numbered in a anti clockwise direction but the numbering starts to the right of the madreporite so this one is numbering 2 then 3 4 5 now coming to the shape of amps generally the ambulacral region they have a simple ray like shape what we found in most of the uh, regular echinoids that means regularia and this is also found in some irregular echinoids these are increasing in width from periproct to peristrom with its maximum size or with its maximum width at the ambitus portion and these are called simple or ray like amps in contrast in some echinoids particularly in the most irregular echinoids the amps looks like a petal structure that is the petals of a flower so these kinds of structures or this kind of shape of amp is known as petaloid or subpetaloid because the shape or the or arrangement of amps looks like the petal of a flower now coming to the ornamentation found in the echinoid found in the echinoids that is the occurrence of spine and this is the type of ornamentation by which the group is also named echinodermata echinos means spiny so these are the long or large uh, pointed projections occur on the interambulacral plates there is no spine like ornamentation in the ambulacral plates and if you look at the other ornamentations also most of the ornamentation are present in the interambulacral plates and that makes the interambulacral plates more stout so that is why i previously uh, told you that interambulacral plates are more stout and that forms the basic structure of the echinoid taste whereas ambulacral plates are the plates which only bears the perforations from which tube feeds emerge apart from spines there are uh, other ornamentations also like the prominent rounded elevations uh, which bears the uh, spines these are the rounded elevations found in the echinoid cells and these are known as the tubercles now each tubercles is divided into two parts the elevated portion this portion this is known as boss and at the center of each boss there occurs a spherical mass this portion this is known as mamelon now this mammalon is basically acts as a ball and socket structure and it or above this mammalon the spines occur so together the spine and the mammalon uh, are acting as a ball and socket structure and by this the spines are attached with the tubercles now in most cases what we found in nature that is after the death of the organism the spines they are uh, destroyed 
from the actinoid test so instead of getting the spines we get the spine bases that is the tubercles apart from tubercles there are also minute rounded portions found in both uh, amps and interamps these are known as granules if we look at the amps and interamps from the point of view of ornamentation it is always found that the interamp plates they are more ornamented or if uh, we found that the both amps and interamps are consist of same kinds of organisms suppose in both amps and interamps they consist the tubercles and granules so the ornamentation type is same in both amps and interamps but if you look at the size and uh, coarseness of the ornamentations we found that the size or coarseness of the tubercles or granules in the interamps they are more larger they are more coarse compared to the ambulacral plates so always there is a differentiation in ornamentation between the amps and interamps interamps always host the more coarse type of ornamentations now there are some other features uh, found in all echinoids rather they are restricted to some specific uh, groups or specific genus or some specific species the first feature is known as fasciole uh, this is an apparently smooth band found in some kinds of uh, echinoids uh, these smooth bands are used to create some kinds of uh, ciliary currents within the burrows of infernal taxa and generate a protective mucus coat so here you can see there are some smooth bands this slight uh, fade red portion or whitish portion here also this yellow arrow portion this portion and these are the portions uh, by which the food rich current is moved uh, easily towards the mouth region because the mouth occurs in the oral side and the, if the current uh, came into contact with lots of those uh, surface irregularities that means lots of those surface ornamentation then the current becomes slow so the mouth region uh, the supply of nutrient rich uh, food uh, particles in the oral side near the mouth is restricted so that is why the some echinoids groups they create these kinds of uh, apparently smooth bands in their cell surface now depending on their positions uh, they have different names when the fascioles present within the petaloid amps such as in this case here you can see these are the petals and the fasciole present inside the petaloid amps is it it is known as endopetalus when the fasciole present in the aboral side and encircle the petals occurring encircling uh, occurring at the peripheral part of the petals then it is known as peripetalus when fasciole present at the ambitus then it is known as marginal fasciole present surrounding the periproct that is the anus it is known as anal fasciole and when the fasciole is radiating along the flanks of the test like the amps and interamps fascioles also radiating from the uh, aboral side central point the aboral side uh, periproct then it is known as lateral fasciole Uh, apart from fasciole there are some other features also found in some specific echinoids the first one is the food group narrow groove or narrow depressed portion which are usually does not have any kinds of ornamentation 
and they leads towards the mount and these are present for the transportation of uh, nutrients or transported transportation of food particles more easily uh, from the distal part of the cell towards the mount so from the peripheral part of the cell the food particles are collected and through these channels through these narrow segments they are converged those food particles towards the mouth so that makes the transportation of food particles from the peripheral part of the echinoid taste towards mouth more easy that is known as food group these are the uh, simple or branch like pattern uh, are observed in the food groups so food groups may be simple that may be a single or there may be branching also present and particularly these are present in the oral side ever dekhte pachis food food group ta sunte pachis to puro ta sir majhe bodhe atke gechilo acha am bole dicchi food group hocche kichu ei narrow channels but depressed portion particularly present thake hocche oral side e je gulo diye ei je peripheral part e je এরা মূলত যেহেতু বললাম ডিপোজিট ফিডার অর্থাৎ সেডিমেন্টের ওপরে যে নিউট্রিয়েন্ট গুলো পড়ে থাকে বা ফুড পার্টিকেলস গুলো পড়ে থাকে সেগুলো এরা খাবার হিসেবে গ্রহণ করে তাহলে এই যে পেরিফেরাল পার্টে যে ফুডটা ওরা কালেক্ট করছে সেই ফুডটাকে একটা চ্যানেলের মধ্যে দিয়ে ওরা কনভার্ট করাচ্ছে টুয়ার্ডস মাউথ এই যে ছোট ছোট সরু চ্যানেল গুলো এই চ্যানেল গুলোকেই বলা হয় ফুড গ্রুপ মানে এটা দিয়ে মুভমেন্ট অফ ফুড পার্টিকেলস টুয়ার্ডস মাউথ এটা অনেক ইজি হয়ে যাচ্ছে ঠিক আছে এই ফুড গ্রুপ গুলো সিম্পল রেলাই হতে পারে অথবা এরা ব্রাঞ্চিং প্যাটার্ন তৈরি হতে পারে ঠিক আছে মাথায় রাখবি এই যে আগের স্লাইড থেকে যে পয়েন্ট গুলো বলছি এই যে যেমন ফ্যাসিওল ফুড গ্রুপ আহ এর পরে যতগুলো বলবে এগুলো কিন্তু সবার থাকে না ঠিক আছে হ্যালো আচ্ছা next is the linule these are found you know it's like the melita so melita is a scientific name a genus name of a irregular echinoid and in this irregular echinoid we found five perforations in the am five circular to elliptical perforations as you can see in these portions this one is one perforation this one is one perforation and from these perforations this is occurs entirely from the aboral side to oral side now these perforations acts as a shortcut for transferring food from the aboral side to oral side so as in the aboral side also there are also uh, ambulacral plates and from these ambulacral plates tube feeds emerge by which the food particles are collected so to get a shortcut to move those food particles in the oral side near the mouth uh, they creates these kinds of uh, perforations or these kinds of hollows within the cells and through these hollows they can quickly transfer the food particles gathered by the tube feeds in the aboral side to the oral side through these holes and these holes are known as linules but although the linules are mainly acts as a uh, shortcut path for transporting food particles but the hollows or the linules they also act as a hydrodynamic stabilizer because of these hollows are mainly present in the sand dollars that means these melita group of echinoids which are very very flat in nature so almost it looks like a uh, coin uh, with this much of size it almost it looks like a disc rather so 
there is ample chance that with sudden increase in current, current uh, these echinoids may be flipped that means their orientation may be changed so to limit the tendency of flipping in uh, some sudden high energy currents these echinoids make these kinds of perforations within their amps so that whenever a high energy current comes the current may get a pathway through these echinoid test from these uh, perforations from these lunules uh, it is almost similar if you look at the many banners or flexes uh, they are hanged in some uh, buildings or higher elevations and if you look closely that after fixing those banners large size banners large size advertisement poster people make some hollows people make some uh, tear the uh, banners so that whenever a uh, high energy wind blown that wind uh, can easily pass through those hollows because otherwise if uh, the large size banner uh, fall in a slightly high energy wind uh, flow that will restrict the wind movement and ultimately the entire structure may collapse so those narrow hollows within the banners within the posters they are the pathways through which the high energy wind uh, go across within the uh, banners and that makes the banner that makes the flakes that makes the poster more stabilized same case is for these disseped echinoids so through these lineals the high energy current passed and that makes them uh, a hydrodynamic stable form because of the presence of these uh, lineals next feature found in some irregular echinoids is the presence of labrum or often it is known as this is a plate like elevated portion or often it is called a teeth like elevated portion found just behind or just posterior to the mouth and so obviously it is found in the oral side here you can see this l marked portion this is a slightly elevated portion found just behind or just posterior to the mouth it is known as labrum and a flattish area behind the or more posterior to the mouth or more posterior to the labrum in the interambulacral region of the oral side that is known as plastron so labrum is just one single elevated portion or one single elevated plate behind the mouth and plastron is a flattish portion posterior to the mouth or posterior to the labrum in the interambulacral region in the oral side now a simple flower like structure is often found surrounding a peristome in some irregular echinoids you can see in this this is the peristome the mouth opening and surrounding some uh, highs and lows of alternate fashion and they are also in five in number five highs and five lows like a flower the depressed portion surrounding the mouth which is corresponding to the ambulacral segments of the oral side these are known as phyllode whereas the elevated portion or the bulging portion corresponding to the interamps of the oral side they are known as borelets so surrounding the mouth there are five alternating phyllode and five alternating borelets arranged surrounding the peristome or surrounding the mouth but again this is not present in all irregularia echinoids 
there are certain varieties there are certain genus or certain species in which we can see these kinds of arrangements of phyllode and bolets like a flower in the oral side surrounding the mouth now in the interior portion of the uh, echinoid shell there we found some internal projections originating inside the peristome from the ambulacral plates so as we came to know that ambulacral plates are continuous from the periproc to peristome but after peristome the ambulacral regions or ambulacral plates they bend inside the um, echinoid test and these ambulacral bending inside the echinoid test they are five in number and these portions are known as perignathic girdle and this perignathic girdle is basically the host to support a complex jaw apparatus inside the echinoid shell which consists of 40 calcareous plates and about 60 muscles arranged in about seven sets so this is a complex jaw apparatus found inside the uh, echinoid taste which is known as aristotle's lantern because aristotle first described this fascinating occurrence of jaw apparatus within the echinoid uh, taste and it resembles like a lantern so according to aristotle this complex jaw apparatus of echinoid taste is known as aristotle lanterns and these aristotle lanterns occurs over the perignathic girdle so the perignathic girdle is basically uh, hosting or is basically the platform above which the aristotle lanterns uh, rest which is a complex uh, jaw apparatus and this perignathic girdle is uh, the inner side feature which is found inside the peristome and it consists of uh, ambulacral area the projections from ambulacral area which are known as auricles and some projections from the interambulacral area also uh, those are known as apophysis so together these projections uh, the ambulacral projections and the interambulacral projections although the ambulacral projections are more prominent uh, together they form the perignathic girdle if we look at the evolution of echinoidia or echinoids although the echinodermata phyla but the class echinoidia first appeared in the upper ordovician at the pt boundary that is the Permo-Triassic boundary mass extinction the echinoids are hard heat and the only echinoid genus which survived the pt boundary is the myocidaris and from this genus all the present day uh, or the mesozoic living uh, echinoids they emerge from this myocidaris genus uh, if you look at the feeding habit echinoids are deposit feeders that is feeding on organic materials acquired from the substrate perhaps they were primarily detritus feeders which grabbed sediments from the surface and brought out the food material from them with evolution the process slightly changed but they remain the deposit feeders that means those uh, food particles which drops within the sediments and from those sediments they selectively take the nutrients if we look at the mode of life all the echinoids are always benthic in their adult stage although in the uh, juvenile stage they are planktonic but in the adult stage all the echinoids are benthic the regularia remains epibonthic that means epiphonal whereas the irregularia echinoids becomes infonal that means 
uh, endoventric. So that's all. That's a brief idea about the echinoid morphology. Thank you.